Welcome to Allergy Dragon Podcast. My name is Martha Morgan. I'm a specialty diet and allergy chef. I happen to have celiac disease and multiple food allergies myself. And I'm a mother to a child with over 30 food allergies. So today I have a really awesome guest. Her name is Stephanie. And she is an allergy mom and OIT and a food allergy master mom. But before we jump into this amazing guest that I have, I know special, amazing. I always say that about my guests, but I really mean it. A quick disclaimer. The views expressed here on our show are the personal opinions and life experiences of ours and our guests. We are not healthcare providers or doctors. Please seek advice from your healthcare professional for any diagnosis or changes to your healthcare plan. End of disclaimer. So my very special guest, I know, like I said, I say that about everybody, but I really mean it. Stephanie, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody, please. Hi, Martha. I am so, so, so excited to be here today. Thank you so much for such a warm welcome. And thank you so much for inviting me. It means so much to me. I am so looking forward to having the opportunity to speak to your community. And if I impact with a small nugget, just one person tonight, I will be the happiest woman in the world. I'm Stephanie Hills. Uh, my Instagram handle is Food Allergy Master Mom, because I believe we should all be food allergy masters. Not an easy thing to be. I'm a mom and an advocate and a food allergy coach. I'm actually a former uh, technology executive in, in software engineering, and I transitioned to this because I've been through a journey with my son, and I love helping others. That's my passion. And I really want to simplify the lives of others uh, as I am a few steps ahead of, of where they are. So thank you so much for introducing, for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. You're welcome. And thank you so much, like I said, for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. And I love the fact that you're like, everybody needs to be an allergy master. And they really do. I mean, even if you don't have allergies. You probably know somebody that has allergies or a family member that has allergies or that kind of thing. They're becoming so prevalent. I really think that what we bring to the table, even though we talk a lot about allergies, because that is what our family's lives are basically, you know, around. It's so important that everybody kind of knows about them. Your podcast is so important. I'll tell you, I was speaking with another school parent today and just happened to mention my son's allergies. And she looked at me, she's like, what are food allergies? And I was so surprised. And so I went on and looked at some statistics and 75% of adults know about are aware of heard of food allergies, but a one in three don't know the symptoms or what a food allergy reaction is. And only 7% know what the top allergens are. So awareness, what you're doing here today is so important. Oh, thank you so much. And really what you're doing too, as well. And I happen to see that post on IG too. <laughs> so I think I liked it. I hope I did, but that's actually where I kind of, I met you. And I think a lot of people have met you is on Instagram and yeah, what you're doing is really important. And I want to definitely deep dive into that. I want you, if you don't mind to go ahead and kind of like open up about like what your journey has been as an allergy mom. That was just the tip of the iceberg, what you're talking about with your Instagram. Instagram post you just did and talking to somebody at school. So why and how you got to where you are now and be and part of OIT, you know, just a small question. <laughs> Great. An open-ended question to go wherever we want to travel. Everyone's food allergy journey is uh, different. My son, uh, as an infant, uh, he wasn't eating. He wasn't sleeping. He was throwing up. He had a head to toe rash. Uh, he was losing weight. We kept mittens on his hands so he wouldn't scratch and a beanie on his head and all of his hair fell out. And I've been to so many doctors, you know, one said it was baby acne. Another said babies don't have food allergies. Another said put steroids on his steroid cream on his eyelids. And the mother knows best. And this was unacceptable to me. And when my son was five months old, his older brother was about to have a major surgery. And I was desperate. I was a desperate mom. It's like, I can't take care of two sick kids. And so I called another dermatologist and another allergists, both crying, the desperate mom, serious. And, and both of them got me in the next day. Both of them properly diagnosed my son. He was diagnosed with dairy, egg and, and nut allergies. And just knowing what was wrong, you know, really, really helped us and uh, put us on a, a journey and a long journey, uh, an educational journey. At 10 months old, I was feeding him. And within five minutes, his lips swelled and his eyes swelled shut and his face swelled and his whole body turned red and, and he started struggling to breathe. And I was I freaked out and I was so nervous and so scared that I messed up the first EpiPen and I did the second EpiPen and we went to the ER and things worked out and the ER was amazing. It was a food allergy mislabeling. So that began my journey to improve or to better understand the minefield of, uh, of, of food labeling. So uh, that's all food allergy moms I I experience that. So, so that was one area of my life. And as he became a uh, toddler, it was the play dates and interacting with other kids. And how do I find healthy food options? All toddlers are picky eaters. I, McDonald's had fr uh, french fries had milk in them at the time. 
And so I worked with McDonald's corporate and got milk removed from French fries. That's my claim to fame for food allergies. And then, you know, we transitioned in, into daycare and, you know, working with, with the daycare and the, the teachers and the classmates that all want to touch each other and put their foods in the mouth. And how do you handle, handle birthday parties? And how, how does he handle this, you know, socially? So, and, and then as we went into elementary, it was, you know, dealing with, you know, the cafeteria, the classrooms, the teachers, the room moms, the parents, people just think that food allergies is just, is just, oh, it's what you eat. But there's so many challenges that a food allergy family has, not just the mom or the child, but the family, you know, it's the, it's the mental and emotional health of the, of the mother and the child or the parent and the child, you know, the mom being overwhelmed, you know, wanting to balance this with her family's needs, the child have, have having anxiety, you know, like I spoke, it, it's the food options, the inclusion, they don't want to be singled out. The other big aspect is safety, right? We want their environments to be safe and we want them to be, be able to eat safe food. So a lot of things at play, you know, in all these different environments at, at the school, even on class trips, um, I would always go chaperone because I didn't know every meal, if it was a week long class trip, if every meal he'd be provided for. And so I was there to uh, provide for him. So he's had uh, 10 anaphylactic attacks in his life that, you know, we've worked through. He is more empowered. He's more educated. He is a thriving 15 year old uh, football player who uh, masters and manages his food allergies uh, fully empowered on his own today. And what's interesting is, you know, I talk about these various stages from toddler to elementary and, and, you know, now as a teenager, he's going through other challenges with food allergies, right? So, you know, it's the dating, it's the social embarrassment. It's the, I don't want to be singled out. I don't, I don't want to go to school functions now because I don't want to be socially embarrassed. There's all sorts of different challenges regardless of what your age is. So you asked me a simple question. And that's been my journey so far. Um, I've learned a lot. I've learned from my mistakes. I've simplified things so that he and I could have, I could give him the best life possible. So that is our journey. And then the next point to that was OIT. I did not want my son to have allergies for the rest of his life. I thought he was going to outgrow them. You know, they say all kids outgrow them. He wasn't outgrowing them. And so I started Googling, right? And I, about three years ago, I discovered OIT and I was trying to find a doctor in Georgia. And so I, I found OIT101.org. So everybody listening, OIT101.org. And I found three OIT doc, uh, allergists in the state of Georgia. And because his current allergist at the time is allergist who had been with him since he was five months old believes that avoidance is the only way and does not believe in OIT or in any type of type of treatment. So I found Dr. Chaco and, and I transitioned. So let's talk about what OIT is. OIT stands for oral immunotherapy. Okay. So oral meaning through the mouth, immunotherapy, you're doing therapy on your immune system. And so what you do is the idea is to take a small dose of uh, whatever that allergen is. Uh, you start off and it's in a solution. It's microscopic amounts. Okay. The whole idea of OIT is you want to desensitize or build up tolerance to that allergen. It is not a cure. Okay. they very clear. It is not a cure. It is a treatment. So we started that first time and we were given, you know, a solution, a microscopic amount. And, and we, we were in the doctor's office for several hours while they observed him for that first dose. And they sent us home and said, stay, take that same dose every single day and monitor him for two hours. So, so, so I kept him out of school, right? During those two hours every day, uh, thank goodness for online school, right? So, <laughs> and, and then every two weeks we updose or we increase the dose. And we've been doing this. And, and as you increase the dose, you build up the tolerance. We've been doing this now for about a year and a half. Um, everybody can go at their own pace. He is now at eight ounces of milk. It is pretty exciting. He's about to graduate. Now, we got to be careful what we say about graduate because graduate means that you have to maintain that amount to maintain that tolerance. So every day for the rest of his life, he's going to have to have some certain amount of milk to keep up that tolerance because if you let it down, then you'll lose that tolerance. It's not a cure. It's a, a treatment. Why we chose milk. So Dr. Chaco said, you want to choose things that are the highest risk and have the biggest impact on your life. So Joshua, his 10 anaphylactic attacks, seven of them have been to milk. So that is the highest risk in his life that we want to remove. You know, the biggest benefit, I mean, milk, every milk's in everything. So that's the biggest benefit to his life. So that's why we chose that. Now, many parents, when they're making the decision, they say, you know, is it right for me? And only a parent knows. And what are their fears? You know, is it right for my child? Will it work? You know, do I have the time? So, you know, can we do this? And I wanted to address, can we do this? So I said it was at your own pace. 
during football season, um, he didn't want to up dose, right? He didn't want to increase the dose. He didn't want to take a chance. So, so we maintained the dosage for four or five months. And then when football season, we started up dosing. So if you've got to go out of town or you've got to go on a family vacation or something, it's okay. You can do it at your own pace. And it could take a year. It could take up to two years. Many parents have questions about uh, their child having a reaction in the middle of o OIT. And I will tell you that Joshua has had reactions, no severe reactions. Uh, they have a very strict protocol where if you have a mild reaction, you know, you have these symptoms and 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 you're, you're at home, like you get a little bit of a rash or you get a stuffy nose or whatever those symptoms are. If if it's mild, they might, they might have you skip a dose or they might have you monitor it. And obviously, if it's a severe reaction, it's epi first, epi past the ER. And then your OIT journey continues. It's just delayed. So for parents who have concerns about what do I do if my child has a reaction, it is very well thought out, very well managed. And I felt very comfortable. And sometimes my son, when he took doses, he would say, mom, you know, my my lips are tingling a little bit or mom, you know, I have a stomach ache. And so he he learned and knew to monitor those reactions and tell me about that. They were mild reactions and they went away, you know, 30 minutes to, to, to an hour. If I look at what the challenges and what the benefits are, the challenges were so little. It's really time and effort. It's finding the time to go to the doctor's office every two weeks and finding the time daily and remembering to do it daily and then being able to monitor around that. So the challenges were so minimal. Uh, the benefits were tremendous, okay? First of all, there's the food options. Oh, my goodness, his whole food options have just exploded now. He's going to be able to eat so much. He's going to have pizza, ice cream, things that you and I take for granted every day. He's just going to have, his palate's going to be so excited. <laughs> so great, great, great options. So, you know, the other thing is safety. We don't have to worry about him having an anaphylactic attack of milk. We don't have to worry about the environments. He doesn't have to worry about socially dating. I mean, there's, he still has two other allergies, but it's just tremendous. And then, and there's the social and mental aspect of it. He'll be included. You know, his anxiety goes down. So the benefits are tremendous. And they, for us anyway, they significantly impacted or outweighed his challenges. So I spoke about our journey. I defined OIT and you as a parent have to know what's right for you and whether it's, it, it, it's going to work, but it was perfect for us. And I spoke to the challenges and the, and the benefits. So mm -hmm. does that get a good, give a good overview of my experience with OIT? I think you did a fantastic job with that. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> Yeah, because like for us, for instance, like you said, the way in the, the challenges and um, I, I like the fact that you definitely brought home the fact that it is a treatment. There's so many times where I will have had somebody that is outside of the allergy community saying, oh, I saw this article and, and it's a cure. No, it's a treatment. It doesn't really cure the allergen. They're going to have to do this the rest of their life. Like it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. For our family, it, it done, ended up not being an option for us. And that's where you have to like go to the doctor and you really have to weigh your pros and cons and not everybody's a suitable candidate. Um, some people are. So that's why um, I think you're, you're breaking it down and how it's worked for you all has been great. And there are some people that have had OIT that it has not worked out good for them. So if anybody out there wants to be on this show and, and share your story in that aspect, please let us know. Cause I think everybody's story is important because we need to make sure that everybody knows all the different options that are available out there. You raise a fantastic point that that parents need to go in this wide open that first of all, some people have other medical complications so that they can't do it. But second of all, people might do it and there's only a certain percentage that it works for. And it's not a hundred percent. And there's different statistics and studies out there. It's anywhere from like, I'm not a medical doctor, disclaimer, anywhere between 60 to 80% success, even depending on what the allergen is. So mm -hmm. I, I know milk has a high, you know, chance of success as, as, as does peanut. So you have to go in, you have to be aware from that, you know, is it right for my family? Have I evaluated the risks? Have I evaluated the impact? Is this the right person to help me through this journey? That's a really good point. Bringing up like how proficient your, you know, allergist is um, in that area is, is something that they've done quite a bit. So I think, yeah, knowing everything and we're allergy moms, we definitely, we study as much as the doctors do, even though we're not doctors. <laughs> we, really? yes. we definitely, we definitely, look into all the statistics and all the numbers but sometimes you just need to hear it from somebody who's going through it and living it to see if it's 
if it's something that you can even do. And I like the fact that it has been very part of his treatment because he has to be. Because if he's not making these decisions, then he's not going to stick with them either um, as, as life goes. So I think that's great because I think we make sure our children are very part of their medical decisions, I think, at an earlier age than some people do because of the food allergies. So um, I like the fact you were like, he didn't want to do this, but we didn't do that. He's the one that uh, goes in the refrigerator every night, gets out the measuring cup, pours the milk in and does his milk. I mean, he does it. He does it. He's completely independent. I mean, I follow up. I always ask every night, did you do your, did you do your OIT? Just, just as a, as a checks and balances. But like I said, he's an independent 15 year old who, who masters this. And he just, he does it because he's so dedicated because he wants to have, you know, more options in life. You know, Dr. Chaco, OIT is his passion out of everything that he does. He's an allergist, a food allergist, a immunologist and, and, you know, an OIT administrator. OIT is, is his passion because he said he sees how it has changed people's lives, but he's, he's Atlanta allergy. So amazing, amazing doctor. No, I was not paid for this plug. I'm just, <laughs> it's neither just was I. <laughs> So you've already kind of already gone over the challenges and benefits of OIT in your case. I mean, you 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 answered everything all at one time because you're you're that efficient. So you're known as the food allergy master mom on Instagram. So can you tell us exactly what that means to you and what you coach people on? Kind of, I know you touched on it a little bit before, but can you kind of dive a little deeper in that? Uh, my passion is helping others. As I stated earlier, we have been on such a journey with my son's food allergies over the last 15 years, and I've learned so much. And I feel that I am a few steps or a few years or a decade or whatever ahead of other mothers and that, that that I have so much to offer them that they don't have to reinvent the wheel. They don't have to do, do things over. And the reason why I say food allergy master mom is that I don't want people to manage food allergies. I want people to be able to master food allergies. So I want to start a movement hashtag food allergy master so that you can truly master them so that you can have the uh, best life possible. Given my experience and what I've done in, in food allergy master mom, I help parents uh, confidently master their child's food allergies for a safe, healthy, and included life. Let me break that down. Moms or dads, their mental health, mental and emotional health is also at stake. You know, they have anxiety. They're overwhelmed. They struggle to believe in themselves. Can I do this? Am I doing the right things? And the whole idea is they we want to give them the confidence that they can balance this with their family's needs, that they can help their child, and that they build a community of support around them. So, so that's why confidence is so important important. And then I say safe. I, I told you earlier that, you know, safety is such a big concern. The food that they put in their mouth or the environment that they're in. We, we want their child to live safely. We want them to be healthy. We want them to have, have, have a broad range of healthy food options, as you know well, because that's your expertise, right? And we want them to have the included. That's the social aspect, right? Not singled out and not left out. And it's about, mm -hmm. you know, we want others to understand their needs, to consider their needs, and to make sure that they're included. So I've created, you know, based on not only my experience, but I've done a lot of research, you know, worked with communities. I've put this, what I call a food allergy blueprint in place that simplifies this. It's a concise toolkit to give them success and empowering the child. Because the more you're empowered, you, me, anybody, the more you're empowered, the more confidence you have right? The more you achieve, the more confidence you, you have. So I have this, I have these emp empowerment phases where as a young child, you start off and you receive the help from your mother and then you learn from your mother. And then now you follow your mother. She gives you small tasks and, 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 and lets you own some of the food allergy tasks across the different areas of, of your life. And now you lead and manage and master. Now, the next thing is, oh my gosh, how do I live day to day? right? There is so much going on. How do I live day to day? So what I have done, because I've lived all of this, right? In all the different areas, restaurants, school, family, grandma, you know, tough conversations, all of it. I've lived it. I've created what I call navigators, okay? And I'll give you an example of one area of life. I have a, a restaurant food allergy navigator. And so it, it gives you, you know, guidance on what to do before the restaurant. What are the resources? What are the apps? How do I find out, you know, what, what the allergens are, what to do at the restaurant, who to work with, who to build relationships with, what are the tough conversations? How do you have, go tour the kitchen, right? All these things to do. And then what do you do after the restaurant, right? When you leave the restaurant and I've given them 
um, you know, there's a there's a sample allergy card in there and, and, and my template for a safe restaurant list that you build. I have various navigators to help them navigate their day to day life, which is so important because they just want to get by. They just want it easy. Somebody give me a concise way to do it. And I have a school navigator, I have a restaurant navigator, party navigator, uh, many, many different navigators. So there's other things within within the program that really just simplify it so that you have this simplified by blueprint and you can help your child through the different phases of life, you know, from, from infant to toddler to elementary, across the different areas in their life to be more successful, to master their food allergies and have the best life possible. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds like a very detailed plan. And I like the fact that you say master your allergies. So like we always say that we help you help tame, we help to tame your allergy dragon because they seem to always be changing. And that's just like life. It's ebbs and flows. So we're constantly trying to tame it. You're going to master it. I also use the word, so you're talking to have their best life. I don't like say, so you're talking to have a normal life. We want our kids to have their best life. You know, every choice of word that I'm using here is so intentional because we don't want them to manage their food allergies. We want them to master their food allergies. We don't want them to have a normal life. We want them to have their best life. And I don't say the best life and I don't say your best life or his best life or, uh, you know, the best life in the world. I say the life that is best for your child because every child has different needs and different desires. And different allergies, different allergies. (laughs) So yeah, I I really appreciate you coming here and uh, sharing your OIT journey and what you're doing as, you know, allergy master, food allergy master mom on Instagram and your coaching services that you provide. So definitely those are some things that might be a right fit for somebody. So definitely check Stephanie out that way. But before we end the show, I always give my guests a chance to either leave us with a thought or anything that you want to address that we didn't get to when we were talking previously. So I want to leave a thought, a very, and you know, for the mom and then a thought for the child. You moms, you food allergy moms out there, I want you to know that you are unstoppable. You can do this. You have the confidence and you know what is best. All the doctors and nurses and teachers and grandma and aunts and uncles and friends, best friends, they want what's best for your child, but you know what's best for your child. You've got that mama bear, you've got that gut instinct, and you're the one who knows the path that your child needs to go on. And if I can, I just want to share a little story. So so when Josh was in elementary, so when my son was in elementary, he kept getting any type of strep and infections. And he kept missing school, school until finally he was just missing straight school. He was just so sick. He was lethargic. He had this ring rash over his body. You know, people said, give him Benadryl. People said, oh, here's antibiotics. Oh, here, he's faking it. Oh, just doctor after doctor, I went to teachers. Oh, he doesn't have a high fever. You should bring him into school. He was lethargic. They all wanted what was best for him. And I said, no, this is not acceptable. I went um, you know, back to his allergist. We walked in the room and she said, oh, he has multithema eriforma. His immune system's out of whack because he cre- it developed all these new allergies, it's seasonal environmental. So his immune system could handle all of these allergies. And so any, he was getting sick with anything. And so we got him on allergy shock. So my point is, trust your instinct. You are amazing. You can do it. You are going to give your child the best life and you know what's best for him. And for the child... I want to say that your food allergies don't define you. They refine you. Your food allergies are not a choice. They're a challenge. Your food allergies may limit you, but they do not stop you from achieving all that you want to achieve in life. So just know that everyone has their different idiosyncrasies they're dealing with. And food allergies is just one of yours. But there are still so many amazing opportunities for you to be so successful and for you to have your dreams in life. I love your ending thought. Thank you so Um, much. You're welcome. That, I guess, about wraps it up. And you need to check out Stephanie. Links will be down below or in the podcast description. Definitely subscribe to, you know, Allergy Dragon podcast and YouTube channel. Again, I hope that one nugget of what I said impacted one person out there in the world today. Thank you for the opportunity and have a blessed day. Thank you again so much, Stephanie. And to all our listeners, we hope we help tame your allergy dragon. And we'll see you next time. Bye.